This is the Geekum A7 Mini PC, and despite being the same size as a mug of coffee, it claims to have incredible performance in gaming, virtual machines, and AI heavy workloads. But I'm skeptical. We've seen a lot of these mini PCs on the market lately, and even though they clearly wouldn't compare to an equally priced desktop PC in terms of performance, it has its own host of advantages over a traditional desktop PC. A lower power draw, a more quiet workspace, and obviously the fact that it's so small it could be hidden inside a D&D book. But are these mini PCs overrated? Is the loss in power worth the tiny form factors? Well, let's answer some of these questions right after this video sponsor. If you want to keep your mind sharp and focused, then you should consider Mad Monk. Mad Monk is a chewable supplement that was originally designed for gamers as a complex pick-me-up that not only helps you become super focused, it helps your mind stay sharp over the long term. Mad Monk is designed to fight off fatigue quickly and enhance your long-term mental sharpness at the same time. The newest version 3.0 comes upgraded with patented Brainberry, a potent natural extract tested on gamers to improve focus and accuracy by syncing your brain, eye, and hand processes. It's an all-in-one support to keep you on top of your game, day in and day out, with an ultimate nootropic blend of 15-plus premium ingredients without any artificial colors, preservatives, or other additives. No more gaming fatigue only razor-sharp focus and improved memory. With patented ingredients, state-of-the-art facilities, and a commitment to health above all else, Mad Muck might not be magic, but it's just real high-quality ingredients in a convenient form factor. So if you want to try them out with a 100% satisfaction guaranteed or your money back, go to madmunk.gg slash Jason Whitmer or click the link in the video description and check out how Mad Monk can help you perform to your fullest. Now these types of mini PCs probably keep popping up in your feed and you might be wondering, who are they for? There's obviously a certain type of person who wants and needs these, but what's the appeal? Well, let's talk about what this thing is and why it might fit perfectly into your setup. Full disclosure, Geekum sent this PC for me to check out, but they don't have any say in the video and they don't get to see it until right now, just like you. The mini PC we're talking about today is this A7 from Geekum. It has a very sturdy build quality and this attractive silver metal casing. Even compared to other mini PCs, it's especially tiny. It's only 4.6 inches by 4.4 inches and 1.3 inches wide. So it's impressively long compared to my size, but that is just crazy small when it comes to computers. It also weighs only a single pound or 450 grams. So it's incredibly portable. You can easily throw it in a purse or even your pants pocket without any issues. But this size has a host of other helpful solutions as well. It can fit in a small closet home lab without having to worry if it'll fit in a shelf because it absolutely will. It could be mounted to the back of a TV for a seamless desk experience, or even for something like this digital calendar I have in my kitchen. There are a lot of people that love a minimalist workspace and lifestyle, and having a big and bulky desktop computer is not something they really want, and they're willing to sacrifice performance for it. Now, in terms of I.O., we're really spoiled on the A7. The front of the machine has a 3.5 mm audio jack, as well as two USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A ports. On the side, there's a full-size SD card reader, which is great for ingesting footage for photographers or content creators, and the back has the full host of I.O. we'd expect. DC in for power, USB 4 Gen 3 Type-C with support for power delivery, two HDMI 2.0 ports for multiple monitor support, an RJ45 port that supports 2.5 gig Ethernet speeds, USB 2.0, USB 3.2, and another USB Type-C 3.2 Gen 2 with power delivery support. For such a small form factor, that's an awful lot of ways to connect to this thing. You can run multiple monitors, have fast 2.5 gig LAN speeds, and have multiple places to plug in super fast external storage. Now you can configure the computer however you want in terms of storage and RAM. The one I'm using has 32 gigs of DDR5 sodium RAM that is clocked at 5600 mega transfers per second, but you can upgrade that as high as 64 gigs. My storage is a one terabyte M.2 NVMe Gen 4 SSD, so you're able to have super fast internal storage as well, or even upgrade it using the standard 2280 sized SSDs. It's got built-in Bluetooth 5.2 support, as well as Wi-Fi 6E, which makes a lot of sense since I feel like a lot of people who'd want this thing would want to use Wi-Fi instead of just more cables. Now the processor is where these mini PCs really shine. This is running the AMD Ryzen 7 7840HS CPU. <laughs> Pretty good, right? What? You don't have every CPU in existence and their stats memorized? Okay, I'll tell you. This guy is a four nanometer chip running on the Zen 4 architecture. It's got eight cores and 16 threads, so lots of headroom for a few virtual machines and Docker containers. It's got a 3.8 gigahertz base clock with a 5.1 max boost clock and only runs at a 45 TDP, meaning it's not gonna create as much heat as a standard desktop chip, but also makes for much less power draw, which we don't care too much about here in North America, but if you're living in Europe or other countries with extremely high power bills, this lower TDP will probably be really appreciated. 
Now you can't compare this to those cheap Celeron or Pentium CPUs in terms of power draw, but this thing has a lot of power for what you get here. And this is actually an APU, so we're also provided with AMD Radeon 780M graphics on RDNA 3. And while we may not be able to get 120 FPS in Cyberpunk, we're definitely gonna be gaming on this thing in between homework or professional workflows. And since we have that 40 gig USB-C port on the back, we could potentially even use an external GPU to get some real desktop level performance gaming. The CPU could certainly handle it. The A7 comes with Windows 11 pre-installed and there's basically no bloat. It's a bog standard install of Windows, but you should never trust any manufacturers on how they handle their storage. So I always recommend doing a brand new install on Windows on every new device. After installing Windows again and doing all the updates, the PC ran perfectly. Watching 4K footage, video editing, Photoshop, all the usual stuff ran great and I had no issues. If you didn't tell me I was working on a PC that's only four inches long, there's no way I would have known otherwise. I'd imagine this thing would be amazing for casual school work, office work, or even for a creator's workflow, like photographers, musicians, or other workload heavy professions. Now, before talking about gaming, let me put this out there. This is not being advertised as a gaming mini PC. It's being touted as a small form factor PC that has an integrated GPU that is able to play some games. They aren't pigeonholing it into a single usage. I know a lot of my viewers only use their computers for gaming, so the thought of paying extra for a PC that can't play games as well as something else makes no sense to them. So just keep that in mind that not everyone wants maximum gaming performance for the price. This mini PC is not for gaming, but it can game. This is usually the part where I showcase some benchmarks and some neato electronic music plays in the background, but I feel like since this isn't a gaming PC, there needs to be some more explanation behind the numbers we're seeing, so bear with all my yapping. First up, let's try some easy to play games that you'd realistically be wanting to play on here, and then move on to some demanding AAA titles. Valorant is a great game to play on basically any PC. It's so incredibly optimized that it can play on just about any potato. At 1080p resolution and low settings, I was able to average about 250 FPS, with the 1% lows hovering around 100. An insane amount of frames on such a tiny PC, but I didn't expect anything less. Even if you're a competitive player, you'll play just fine on this bad boy. Fortnite is a game that is hit or miss depending on the hardware you're running, so I wanted to see how much FPS we can get if we crank it down to performance mode. On 1080p, I averaged around 220 FPS with 1% lows at 170 throughout the match. Another esports game that runs great, but that's not saying much since we're in performance mode, but hey, this isn't a gaming PC, so I'm still pretty impressed. Now the finals did not fare as well. Even with FSR turned on to balanced mode, I could barely get to 60 FPS. And while it was definitely playable, it's not the max FPS esports experience we saw in the other games. The finals is surprisingly hard to run and is not super optimized right now, but it's still very fun. By the way, any kind of tearing you're seeing in the gameplay was not present on screen during benchmarking. It's because the capture device I used to record all this started breaking down for some reason. Thanks a lot, Obama. GTA V is an older game, but it's still heavily played to this day, so it's gonna get tested. I'm just going through the benchmark at very high settings, I was actually only able to get an average of 75 FPS. Considering the game is old as hell, I really thought we'd be able to do better than that, but it could be a limitation of the engine it's built on. It's only downhill from here as we go deeper into modern AAA games. 75 FPS is still nothing to poo-poo at. It's absolutely playable, and you can have an amazing time playing with your friends as long as you turn off the FPS counter and stop worrying about it so much. Red Dead Redemption 2, while on low settings, averaged around 50 FPS with 24 FPS 1% lows. Not an amazing result, but for a single player experience in between classwork, it's totally doable. Baldur's Gate 3 is hard to benchmark, so I just chose a place that is full of people and is hard to run on any PC. Medium settings with FSR on, we averaged 40 FPS and 1% lows was at 24 FPS. For a slow paced game like Baldur's Gate, this is playable and about what you'd expect on something like the Steam Deck. Running around Baldur's Gate the city was a good experience and even when I started combat with the bro who was much stronger than I am, the FPS was very stable and the game was still fun as hell. And last but not least, we have Cyberpunk 2077, which actually fared a little better than expected. Using low settings and keeping the FSR turned on, we averaged 51 FPS during the benchmark, which is absolutely fantastic. Being this close to 60 will really help this feel like a normal gaming experience, and let's be honest, it will run laps around how this game played on the PlayStation 4 when it first came out. So I guess if you have a mini piece like this, you could have a great time running around Night City. So to wrap up all the benchmarks, is this thing a gaming powerhouse? No. But you can play most games within reason while making a few sacrifices. So having said that, who is a mini PC like this even for? These aren't exactly budget oriented. 
I mean, this one is about $700 on Amazon at the time of this recording. And don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to say it isn't worth it. The R&D that goes into building something like this and making sure it isn't too loud and isn't overheating but still has a very powerful CPU in this form factor isn't easy. So I do believe these mini PCs are worth the price premium you're paying for. An ideal candidate for something like this is a student who has to live in a dorm room or a small apartment. You might not have the room for a full desktop PC, or maybe you're going back and forth between your parents' house and your dorm room, and you want something that can easily be taken with you. This thing could do all of your schoolwork, even if you are in a more demanding field and require something to edit videos on or, or do 3D art or something. And you can even game on your off days, play some esports titles with the boys, maybe do a run through Cyberpunk as well. Or maybe you are looking for a home server, something that can run 24-7 and not completely destroy your power bill. The A7 is quiet, low powered, and small enough to fit into any network closet, or even just under your desk. You can plug it in and access it 100% headless through that 2.5 gig LAN port. Spin up a couple of VMs, Docker containers, Plex, a Minecraft server. Heck, you can even turn it into a streaming remote gaming machine. Maybe just run some easy to play games on it headlessly and stream it directly to your living room TV. Or maybe you just want a computer to run as your HTPC. It's small and quiet enough to fit into basically any home entertainment theater, you can easily access any web browsers or downloaded media you have. And paired with one of these trackpad keyboard combos from Logitech, this thing would be amazing to run 4K HDR footage directly to your TV. And you could also install a bunch of fun to play games on it or emulate some of your old favorites all the way up to the Nintendo Switch and play them with ease. Or maybe you're this guy and you're just looking for a PC that is strong but can still hide behind your monitor to have the cleanest setup possible. You don't care too much about how much FPS you get in Cyberpunk. You, you want a PC that is completely hidden as to not disturb your minimalist aesthetic so you can be a freelance software developer in peace. But whatever the reason, there are quite a lot of different ways to use these mini PCs and I really like the versatility of them. I imagine a student could use this for four years, and then once they get a bigger place and a big boy job and they want to buy a big desktop PC, they can relegate the mini PC to being a home server or an HTPC. The fact that it doesn't just serve a singular purpose is really awesome, and I fully support any kind of technology that can be used in many different ways and keeps them out of the landfill. So should you buy the Geekum A7? Well, it's certainly appealing to a lot of people, and Geekum says they offer a three-year warranty, which Sounds great, but warranty claims are only as valid as much as you trust the company. And unfortunately, all or most of these mini PCs are developed by overseas companies that aren't as well known here in the States. Which isn't to mean I don't trust them, I just mean there's less information out there to prove to me that their customer support or warranty claims are pretty seamless. That being said, there are actually a ton of companies making similar products with the exact same CPU. They vary in price, size, and I.O., so I'll drop a link to a few of them as well as the Geekum A7 in the description if you think something like this might be for you, and I recommend going with some of the other ones as they're cheaper and probably pretty similar. But if you got this far in the video and you'd rather spend that money on a custom gaming PC that you can build yourself, check out these two videos where we build super powerful PCs within a reasonable budget. If you like this video, please hit the like button below. It really helps out the channel. My name is Jason. Thanks for watching.